What's up guys, CB Money here back with another video and the other day I was running some tests on my system and I was just using the integrated GPU because hey I'm not going to throw in a video card into a desktop that's going to be set up for all of like 5 minutes and the thought came to me does running the GPU inside of the CPU so the iGPU actually increase the heat on the overall package and the CPU cores. Well, today we're going to go ahead and find out. So the logic behind today's test is actually really interesting because Intel themselves and subsequently AMD also to divide a large part of what would be a CPU chip to be the integrated graphics, we do see a large part is taken up, which would then sort of think, well, a large part of heat would be dumped out of this particular part, wouldn't it? Well, we're definitely going to have to look into that and actually see what it's doing. Taking a look at some of these images of the CPU architecture, we do see a lot of the time a big portion is taken up with that GPU. Now today, we'll be focusing in on actual uh, Intel parts, and we do have a follow-up video coming with a massive showdown between AMD, Intel, different generations, and all that kind of stuff, so do expect that video coming down the line. But today, we're more focusing on the Intel side to take a look, just sort of to answer in general what kind of a difference we do get. And whether we're looking at mobile parts or desktop parts, all of them do feature quite a large part, to the point that there have been some generations of Intel CPUs that feature a second can die on the same substrate for just dedicated graphics processing, which is really, really interesting to see. So just how much heat do these parts actually dump out? Now, a lot of people think, oh, big part of the CPUs for actually GPU performance, well, it's going to dump out of a lot of heat, right? Well, maybe not exactly, mainly because these parts all have the same TDP with or without the GPU running. You kind of think just because you turn on the GPU, still going to have the same TDP. So in theory, should still run at the same temperature. Not to mention integrated graphics or iGPUs aren't exactly the world's most powerful things. I mean, sure, they can run some benchmarks like what we got going over on behind me in very low settings. And sure, a lot of them these days are getting better. But honestly, they're not really blowing anything away like you would expect from a dedicated GPU. So by that logic, we should then see no extra heat, basically, because they're not really that powerful. They use, well, not that much more power because the CPU has to stay within the same TDP. So in theory, they shouldn't dump out a lot of power. But then at the same time, another theory would say a lot of heat would be dumped out because there's so much of the portion taken up with the graphics. But there's only one way to find out. So let's go ahead and get started with our test. And for today, I didn't exactly have a very high-end desktop to test. We tested with the Intel Core i3-550, which at the time of recording is the highest-end iGPU system I have in the office at the moment. The rest of the systems I have just don't seem to have integrated graphics. I've got a ton of X299 and X99 stuff from Intel and AMD and that kind of stuff and I don't exactly have a whole bunch. The first thing that I did was go ahead and load up the desktop with Prime95 to go ahead and warm things up, and then I also to use Unigen Heaven to warm up the GPU side. I had the Intel stock cooler on this guy with Arctic MX4 between them, which you can find more about in that video right there, and I gave it a 20 minute cooldown window with a 20 minute heat up window, so 20 minute cycles to see what we got there. Now personally, I'm not exactly expecting much, maybe one or two degrees different, but let's go ahead and start to take a look at those numbers. So with Prime95 just running by itself, we take a look at the CPU numbers and they're actually pretty respectable for what we have here. Around that low 70 degree marker range to that high 60s is pretty much what we're getting on the hottest core and what we should expect out of a setup like this. Oh, and also to room temperature was 21 degrees Celsius. Then we go ahead and flip that iGPU on and hang, whoa, hang on a second, we actually get a very noticeable increase in heat, not only on the package, but also to each core themselves, with about an 8 degrees increase on each CPU core, which at first I thought was a bit of an error, maybe something wrong in measuring, so I reran these numbers, and yes, I'm getting around 8 to 10 degrees warmer temperatures on the CPU cores just from running the iGPU. We're not measuring iGPU temperatures, we're not measuring the full package temperature, we're just looking at CPU core temperature, and those CPU core temperatures are warmer with those iGPU enabled. Now this was really surprising to see that we're still using the same wattages of power, but we're actually getting more heat pumped out which was really, really interesting. And this is not just a little bit of heat. This is enough to go between thermal throttling and not thermal throttling. If your system was using an iGPU and you were going ahead and say running at that 90 degree marker, if you were to add 10 degrees Celsius by using the iGPU, boom, you're well over 100 TDA max. System would shut down from being too hot. So the iGPU may not be the best thing, but if you are not using one, well, hey, you're saving yourself around 10 degrees Celsius. So TLDR of this relatively short video, does using the iGPU increase core temperature on your CPU 
Yes. How much does it increase? Well, today we found around 8 to 10 degrees Celsius on our system. However, on laptops and smaller devices without as good cooling solutions, this can definitely be amplified from anywhere from 15 degrees up to even 20 degrees Celsius, depending on the cooling solution and depending on the different generations of CPU you are running. The difference? Yes, there definitely was a difference, and it was definitely noticeable and could be the difference between thermal throttling and not thermal throttling if you are in those types of situations. That said, this was a sample size of a very small amount and if you want to see a massive showdown let me know in that comment section what CPUs you would like me to test out to see how the iGPU affects the overall temperature of the actual system so please let me know down in that comment section that video is coming but it'll be awesome to see the CPUs that you want me to test out in that video guys if you want to pick up any of the things that we did talk about I'll leave them linked in that description box but thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one